This movie was brought to you by DwayneWright.com, FileMaker Framework Solutions, virtual one-on-one FileMaker training, consulting, and custom design services. For more information, please visit www.DwayneWright.com. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne Wright of DwayneWright.com, and in this series of videos, we're going to cover different techniques for passing data from one script to another script. Now this was prompted by a reader question and let's just go ahead and read those notes so we have a foundation to start from. The reader wrote me, I am hoping that you can help me with my understanding of the use of the field defined as global and how I'm using them in my scripts. What I've done in all my scripts is use a number of fields defined as global and use these to pass values from one script to another. For example, in script A, I set a global field with a value, then I call script B from script A. The first thing I do in script B is to read the global field and use or set a variable using that value or that data that's in the global field. So, are you able to confirm that this is correct or if it will cause issues? All right, so is it correct? It's correct, will cause issues. Probably not. There's a few things that could uh, happen. They're fairly rare, but uh, they would work. I would say this technique is being used hundreds, if not thousands of times each day. Um, the main reason is because it used to be the only option that was available to us. And there's a bit of the rub. There are other options now. And I would have to say that any professional FileMaker, full-time FileMaker developer, doesn't use the global technique anymore, even though it could work. And if they're working on a legacy database and they see that technique, they more than likely will optimize that script to use one of these other methods, and so we're going to cover those. So what I've done in these series of videos, we're going to cover, I believe it's four, maybe five different techniques. Let's go ahead and open the file and take a look. So we go into scripts and bring it on over. So I have one technique that I'll show you that's uh, using the globals, like you illustrated. Another one that's using script parameters. And that would probably be the most common way that a developer is going to pass one value in one script to another script. And then a uh, basically, it's kind of a flip on that, is using script results. And in that case, when you're using script parameters, you're pushing data to the other script. In a script result, you're actually pulling it from a previous script. We'll show that off. And then we actually have two examples using script variables. And you said you're using script variables, and you can just use variables themselves. If there are in if the two scripts are in the same file, if they're in a separate file, then you would have to use the parameter or the result method. But if the scripts are in the same file, you can use variables. And we have two different ways that we're going to show to do that. Okay, so what we're going to do is go ahead and fire up the first example, which is the way that you're doing it, and um, you know explore it a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and close up the folders for the options that we're going to cover a little bit later. And then I'm going to fire up script A. And what script A does is it sets one global field, sets another global field, sets another global field, and then performs script B. And then in script B, we have a show custom dialog box step. And in the message, what you can see is that we're concatenating the contents of global A, B, and C to get a message. So we are passing that data to script B and then showing that in the show custom dialog box message. And let's go set. And we will leave that up to the side. Let's go ahead and clear out our global fields. And let's turn on our script debugger, a feature of FileMaker Advanced, so we can step through the script steps one at a time. Let's go ahead and fire up script A. Now we can see the very first step is going to set global field A equal to this method. And now we'll set our second global field. And we'll set our third global field. So we've set the three global fields to this method uses global fields. 
And we're going to go ahead and step into the next script step by clicking this button on the debugger, which is our show custom dialog box message. And you can see that we've got the concatenated result of the values going across. And it works. And that would work between two different files. So what's wrong with it? Um, well, obviously, if you every time you create a field, you're adding more overhead inside of your file. There's more fields that, and the more overhead you have, the more potential problems it may have in a database that just has a ton of fields already. Uh, if you accidentally delete the field, you, of course, would have a problem with your script. If you would delete the table occurrence that is linked to the field from the, the relationship graph, you'll probably have a problem. Uh, if you try to pass data of a different type, so if you define a global field as a date, you're trying to pass a number or text information, you might have problems doing that. Um, these are all fairly rare occurrences, but they can happen. And so that's not why developers stay away from it. I would say most professional developers stay away from it just because the other methods of using parameters, results, and variables are a little cleaner, a little more elegant, and are a little more portable from one FileMaker solution to a next. And so we'll cover those options in a forthcoming movie. Do you have questions or comments about the video you just saw? Please feel free to email me at info at Thank you.